Welcome to the plaza outside BBC Breakfast. We have a blindfolded Louise Minchin with us here at the moment. We've got a few surprises lined up for you. Um, we promise you that we make sure that your final ever BBC Breakfast finished in style. So, Louise, if you're ready, yeah. would you like to take off that blindfold <laughs> and say hello? <laughs> Super weird, isn't it? This is Hello, a, everybody. This will all become clear. We've got a sea of minchins here. Wow, um, yeah, you can see a sea of minchins. I like that you've got different hairstyles as well, Louise. This <laughs> is why we all needed uh, blue tack and sellotape. This is why we've been keeping things very secret. How you, can I ask you, how are you feeling at this point? I know this is weird. I know you like to be uh, in control. I, I, know I, you're think not. I have been, you know me extremely well. I have been channeling uh, that jumping off of fairiness and thinking it's okay. I've trained for this. I'm ready for this. I've planned for this, but I have not planned for this. In any way. <laughs> I was thinking of you last week when we were speaking to Bear Grylls and he was talking about that moment of fear. You remember on the in the aeroplane and he said you've just got to step out and yes, enjoy it. This yeah, is your moment to step out and enjoy it. Well thank you and thank you as well for breaking our golden rule of touch. You've had to hold my hand all the way along to get me here. Yes but it's been it's been lovely to see you this morning enjoying yourself enjoying your program you've been on for so many years. Um, I want you to sit there and sort before, of... Before we start, yes. am I allowed to hug people or not? Uh, probably not. I'd I'll, I'll check that. I'll check that in a minute for you. I'm sure you <laughs> probably get shouted at by somebody. But, uh, yeah, we've got cushions for you. We've got <laughs> sequins. We've got glitter. We've got the sofa. We're outside oh, in the lovely so weather, strange. which we've sorted for you as well. I want you to sort of gather your thoughts, OK? okay. Compose yourself and um, have a watch of this. I think you'll enjoy it. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Very good morning. You are watching breakfast. Good morning. After 20 years on the famous red sofa, she's leaving. Enjoy the day. Should we give them one more cheer before we go? Ready? Go! She's covered every major event over two decades and always a consummate professional. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning. Sorry, oh, that's so embarrassing. Like, how have I done that? It's actually so dark when we got here that you want to reveal. Well, or to admit the fact that I've actually got my dress on back to front. <laughs> it's still going. We managed to turn it off. How have I done that? Go on. What do you do? Get better. What's your advice? Oh, oh no. don't, don't that's do that. That's a really bad idea. <laughs> I'm devastated you're leaving, by the way. I literally love you for that. <laughs> Honest to God. Yeah. I mean, you've been a stalwart for, the, what, like you said, the past 20 years, so it's, it has been lovely waking up with you in the morning and receiving our news from you. It's been lovely. You, you know, you're a consummate professional and you're amazing at your job, and, and yet you, you're wonderful. You brighten up the day. I'm going to miss you, Lou. Oh. I'm really going to miss you. On the way out, okay. maybe we'll have a hug. OK. Thanks. Thanks, Luke. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you. Cheers. A woman loved by the stars <laughs> and by her public. Two words for you. OK. Louise Minchin. Love her. Yeah, love her. Professional, cheeky, sense of humour, quite attractive. We've come along. So, how did it all begin? Let's go back to Hong Kong, 1968. She was born in the middle of a typhoon in Hong Kong, literally in the middle of it. And I always think that imbued her with some form of adventure and excitement. I'm an avid watcher of the programme, of course. I imagine <laughs> that one person might be watching me, like oh, maybe... Yes. My mum or dad. Yes. And of course the other funny thing is for me when I go through an airport. We were just standing over there, some of us one million. Look up at the screen and there was Louise's enormous face on the thing and I wanted to say to the whole crowd, be quiet, that's my daughter. Because it is this which has really inspired us. Don't hold back. Oh. 
I can't believe that you're swapping the sofa for triathlon and swimming, biking, running, well they are just amazing sports but you could have chosen something a little bit easier. Well good luck with whatever you're going to be doing and I hope we get to go out on a bike ride very very soon. I just want to say congratulations for a very long time on the BBC Breakfast sofa. As you can see I've been very tight leotards but I hope you're going to enjoy the triathlon and yeah again well done. Thank you so much for all you have done over the past years, bringing us the news in such fashion every single morning. I'm going to miss your face so much. You can do it! Go Lou! I remember being there with you uh, in Chicago in 2015 at the World Triathlon Championships. It's unbelievably impressive. I've got no idea how you managed to get up for all those early mornings and still train at the same time to such a high level. I have a nose man. <laughs> Best of luck and much love from the Brownie Brothers. The boys are right. Here we are in a rather fetching outfit. Uh, I should probably say, Louise, I would only do this for you. Um, look at this get up. I know you're used to this, but I'm not. But this is what it's all about, inspiring others to, to test themselves. So if you're ready, I'm off to do triathlon stuff. Look at that muscle. Somewhere. It's in there somewhere. Keep being brilliant and keep reminding yourself and everyone else that whatever it is, you can do it. Go, Minchin! There is no end to Minchin's talent. But there is one thing she won't have to do anymore. I'm not going to miss the 3 o'clock in the morning alarm call, or to be more precise, 3.42. That I, I won't miss at all, um, and, and nor will she. We've just been reminiscing over our times, crossing paths at 3.40 a.m. when we're getting back from nights out, so drunk, and seeing you wake up for work, and I'm going to miss those times. Yes, I'm also grateful that our curfew is now not 3.40. <laughs> we're proud of you, and we love you, and you love can you. do it. I think of my mum as kind of this superhero, when in terms of how determined and how much she kind of sticks to what she believes, and. She, she would never give up, and I'm so proud of her. Just like before, Louise, lift your feet. So today, let us present, for the very last time... Minchin, I can't believe you're going. After all those years together on News 24, News Channel, I think once even News 25. Now on BBC News 25, News 24. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you've been fantastic and you'll be sorely missed. And I send you lots and lots of love. Bye. I hope you have the most fantastic morning this morning. It has always been an absolute joy doing BBC Breakfast with you. It's rather busy here. But anyway. <laughs> <Hi>. <laughs> Am I shouting at you? Yes. <laughs> I have loved watching you over the last 20 years on the BBC. Um, early in the morning and I've been lucky enough to sit with you quite a few times. Uh, you are going to be so missed, really missed. Good luck. Right. Louise, your strength, your determination, your utter brilliance as a triathlete and woman, I think you're brilliant. I think you're going to carry on being brilliant away from here. Hi Louise, it's Rick Astley here. I just want to say goodbye and good luck with everything. Lots of love, all the best. Cheers. Michael here, just wanted to wish you the biggest of loves and to say that I'm gonna miss you on that sofa. One of the only things that could get me through getting up so blooming early was knowing I was gonna see your face. Um, sorry, Dan, but it's true. So, Louise Minchin, let me tell you what those words mean to me. A truly great professional sofa partner who always had a smile on her face. Well, most of the time. An amazing, amazing athlete. And I'm proud to have helped inspire you by letting you win when we raced against each other. But most of all, I think of a warm, sunny person who will always be my friend. So from all of us who've been with you over the past 20 years, watching and working, we want to wish you the very, very best.
Oh. Uh. Oh. 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 I mean, I don't, I don't even know where to start on that, but what it, what it is is a reminder of the joy, the joy that I've had doing this job and also of the deep friendships that I've made because ending that with Bill as well, you know, we're still friends. We're still, um, play the, we play the lottery together still, and that was six years ago, so Dan... That's not what you're leaving, is it? You've not won the lottery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but it, it, thank you very much for a beautiful film and the beautiful reminder of the joy that I've had doing this fantastic job. It's not over yet. We should say thank you to everybody who took part in that. Rick Astley, Rebecca Adlington, Michael Ball, Darcy Bustle... I mean, Terminal seriously. Course, Adam Peaty, lots of familiar faces for you as well. Brownlee Brothers, don't uh, forget well, them. Well, the Brownlee Brothers. We've, all, we've even got a live band for you today. Can you strike up? Go, go for it, guys. <laughs> <laughs> hey, brilliant! Thank you! Thank you, Umpa, that brass. You, you seem to be cool. You mentioned the brown leaves. This is I did mention the brown leaves. Them oh my god, you. okay, so right, okay. Feel free to tell us. Do you chat while I do talk this? Talk us through anything. I mean, you know, they are, you know, there are obviously other brilliant um, athletes like Georgia Taylor Brown and Vicky yeah. Holland and Jess Learmoth and Jodie Stimpson and Lucy Charles. Yeah. And, you know, oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, we thought you'd have a bit more There's time in your hands. Yeah. Hold on. There you go. Ooh, look at that. You've got your very own, very special <laughs> triathlon wetsuit. You don't have to put it on now, by the way, okay? <laughs> Really? No. There's the keys. I can go for a quick no, swim. You, you know me. We've got a few more extra surprises for you because oh, you, you I know our sea of mentions. Very much. There the are some faces behind there that oh, you might recognise. Oh, I okay. love you. Okay. So, if the band can strike up, can we br please bring on surprise very mention strange. number one? <laughs> Double jabs. They both oh, be double, double jabs. Jab. Stay, stay away. <laughs> we, we've done what, much worse than that in the past. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> we are, are pre-watershed. Right. Uh, Rob Rinder. Rob Rinder, everybody. Oh, Come on. Thank you so it's much. It's a complete gift. Uh, hi, Dan. Hello. Uh, what a complete privilege it is <laughs> to be here, not just on your last day. Um, uh, you just kind of, you are Louise Badass mentioned what people didn't see um, on that incredible gift and privilege we had to run literally across the oh. desert uh, for 32 miles is on the night before. Oh, uh, your leg was swollen, your um, eyes were watering. Um, I was and having you, a full-on meltdown, actually, lying in a fetal position in my in my tent. But the point was, nevertheless, uh, you got up the next morning uh, at the time oh. you always do, uh, ready, and you determined, you determined that uh, you were going to finish that with joy, with delight, and with humour. And I think for me and so many people, uh, you speak to something so kind of important now after the last 18 months oh, and so after the last 20 years, which is about... Um, finding the delight in everything you do and being resilient and powerful and above all else not letting the world determine who you are um, but speaking to the rest of us to remind us that you get to decide your own narrative and oh. I watch you that day and I think I said to you before and I think a lot of us who are around you feel the same that overwhelming Louise badass Minchin power <laughs> can um, <laughs> can teach us all so much and oh, it was you. one of the great gifts of my life to spend oh, that day with you. Oh my gosh and uh, I mean we it was an extraordinary day wasn't it we went over these beautiful sand dunes in Namibia forever and ever it was absolutely extraordinary it touched my heart I've not seen you since and it's been so we did a marathon we did we did the oh uh... gosh no we did we did, we a did a marathon oh, we did another marathon <laughs> she's so we? busy Rob. We she's so busy well she got up in the morning went, oh, we're doing I, 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 we're doing a marathon I invited today. him to come and stay and then and I said yeah we're going to go and do the uh, virtual London marathon which he did and yeah. for those oh, I love you so much. You, Thank you. you, of course, met on this yeah. uh, amazing thing for Comic Relief. And from the minute she came back, she started talking about you. And she hasn't really stopped since. But what was it, do you think, that, that brought... I know, I know, you know when you're, you need each other to get through something, that often helps. What was it that attracted you to the... What did you know about her before? And what did you learn? No, I mean, I watched... Our, <laughs> other channels are available. But I watched, <laughs> I watched BBC in the morning. And, uh, you know, you kind of 
part of the tapestry of people's sort of lives. It's the day, you know, the ritual of the day. And I knew that you were fit, and I knew that you could do stuff, to say the very least, physically. I mean, look at the videos to say, you know, you are, you are muscle, internal and external. But um, the reason this really changed everything, Dan, was because um, it was the hardest thing I've ever done. Mm. It was oh, and, he d and he's tough. No, he but it was 34 stuff, yeah. degrees and bonkers, and I just thought, um, everybody's going to die here. And I wondered how, you know, <laughs> frankly, uh, how on earth they'd allowed this to happen in the first place. <laughs> um, but really, it was for me um, watching, truly, um, the night before, how bad things were and um, us deciding, Do you know what, we're going to run together. And Louis said, you know what, I'm going to run alongside you. And there was a part of me that had that little germ <laughs> of doubt going, yeah, all right. And um, step after step, moment after moment, even laughter after laughter, she just pressed on until the end. And there was one particular moment when we were climbing up this high... I know high, what you're going to talk about. It, it changed my life. This high... Uh, it, from sand high, dunes. These it's... great big... At the sand dunes, we were tethered together by music. I mean, you say sand dunes, but they were mountains. There were huge, vast things. And on top, I just heard in this inimitable... You know, kind of Louise minch fantastic way. <laughs> now, I'm a little bit terrified. I've got terrible vertigo, but I shall carry on going anyway. <laughs> it was just like, you know, and that sense that you're completely present, knowing that somebody's afraid, knowing somebody uh, is, is obviously not exactly in their comfort zone, to say the very least, that they're actually surrounded by an idea that it might not be perfect, there's danger about, but you just press on because mm. that's what you've agreed and promised and determined to do. And when we ran in with each other, it was, um, I've said this before, I, I keep trying to recapture uh, it and I can't. It was we can, But the thing the is now, thing. we can do something crazy like that again, can't we? And I remember he We're was in it. charge of the soundtrack mm. and I remember particularly True Colours just blasting <laughs> in our ears as we that's went right. up these extraordinary um, sand dunes slash mountains. What yeah. an amazing experience. Are you talking about you. music? Because you took part in that concert that we did together at Bridgewater oh, yeah. Hall as well in Manchester. And that's when I, I sort of got an insight into how you prepare for things. Because oh, you've got this thing so in you bad. where you are... But you're, terri you're, you're <laughs> terrified of something that you don't feel comfortable with. You sort of embrace those nerves. You have a little panic, but you always manage to do whatever it is you're worried yeah. about. Because you, you have to have that moment before of worry and then go, actually... Oh, well. I'm going to be fine and then step out and it, it's all perfect. Yeah. I've got a sort of a, a thing in my head which, uh, when I'm feeling really nervous, which is, it, it sounds ridiculous, but I think about jellyfish because I've had these beautiful moments. Bit, I know it's, it's absolute madness, isn't it? These beautiful moments in my life where I've been in extraordinarily terrifying yeah. situations, seen them, seen their beauty and just going, you know what, it's all OK. Yeah. Um, it, it is OK. And it's not just that, but um, I think you make everyone kind of around you OK too. Um, I wish I could. And that, um, yeah, uh, that, that moment, uh, it, you know, it, it's really hard to describe. It's also when we did our, our long sort of marathon. It, that, was long, um, it was long because I was very slow. <laughs> well, it wasn't just that. No, we, um, that uh, I think more than anything else, you kind of taught me that things don't have to be perfect. You don't necessarily have to win. Um, you definitely but don't. But above all else, it's, it's you can do whatever it is you choose if you push hard enough. And um, that delicious idea that we can just go one step at a time and... Um, and make it to the next tree. Make it to the next tree. And uh, <laughs> I, I found that really moving. And it's been such a, a gift. I know I speak for quite literally millions oh, of people you. that you're the sort of big or younger sister <laughs> that, they, uh, that they wish that they, that they had. You and speak so uh, well, because that is what so many people have said about you, Louise, that your ability to make people feel comfortable and OK when they're in diff difficult circumstances. And I know you don't think that that's something that you do well, but you're amazing at it. And there's so many people who've sat on the sofa and I've watched you, I think I don't know what to say. And you find the words to say. And that's, that's, a, that's an unbelievable skill. I think today could skill. possibly be the exception to that rule. <laughs> well, you don't have to say too much today. In fact, all you do have to do now, we've, we've, we're still on I until... I can't believe you got I know, we're, we're still on until 9.15. You know have to have to say 8.59, it's 8.59. Oh, are you doing that now? No, you have to, this is your last is ever it time is to it say 8 59? it's 8.59. Which camera? Uh, let's go to the big jib here. Go to this one. I don't, I'm well, sure we'll get a big cheer when There you is say a it reason well. why we say it. Um, I'm not going to explain that. It's 8.59. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>
Let's take one last look at the news headlines here on BBC Breakfast. Covid booster vaccines will begin to be offered across the UK from next week. It's thought more than 30 million people will be eligible for the jab, including all over 50s and frontline health workers. It's part of a wider strategy to control the virus over the winter months. But the government scientists have warned there could be a significant rise in hospital admissions unless some restrictions are reintroduced. The UK inflation rate is now at 3.2%. This month's figure is the biggest rise since records began. The sharp jump was driven in part by higher food costs. The rate now exceeds the Bank of England's inflation target of 2%. Detectives investigating the death of journalist Lyra McKee in Londonderry have arrested four men. She was shot while she was reporting on rioting in the Cree on the Craigan estate in April 2019. The men, aged 19, 20, 21 and 33, were arrested under the Terrorism Act, according to the police service of Northern Ireland. One man has allegedly been charged with murder and another man charged with rioting and associated offences. Relatives of four men who died in a mining disaster in the Swansea Valley ten years ago are calling for a full inquest into their deaths. They were killed when water flooded the Glacian Drift Mine in September 2011. The mine's manager and owners were cleared of manslaughter charges three years later. The two surviving miners say the tragedy has been swept under the carpet. The health and safety executive said it would be inappropriate to comment on details of the investigation. We have got lots more planned for Louisa's last programme here on Breakfast Today. We will be back with her and Dan in just a moment. First, a last quick look at the headlines where you are this morning. Hello, good morning. A study of almost 200 fatal accident inquiries into deaths in custody over 15 years found that in 90% of cases the sheriff made no finding and no recommendation to improve practice. The report found that since new legislation in 2016, FAIs into deaths in custody have taken longer, had less chance of a finding and have involved the families less. An independent review by the Scottish Government into deaths in custody is expected next month. A spokesperson said lessons that need to be learned will be learned. Meanwhile, a new approach to sentencing people under the age of 25 is being recommended to the criminal courts by the Scottish Sentencing Council. If approved, courts will be required to consider rehabilitation as a primary way of sentencing young people. Judges will have to take experience of trauma into consideration. And the prescription of opioids such as morphine and tramadol increased by 40% for patients awaiting hip and knee replacements during the pandemic. That's according to research from Aberdeen University. The average waiting time for surgery has increased by an average of 90 days. Researchers are calling on alternatives to be found. The weather now and it's a dry start for most, though mist and fog through central Scotland may cause problems on the roads. It soon lifts slow to reveal sunny spells for most. The highlands and islands will see thicker cloud and patchy rain spreading east during the day. And that's all for the moment. We'll be back with your lunchtime news at 1.30. I do hope you can join us then. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye. Welcome. Oh, you can clap if you like. Come on, everybody. Oh, here we go. Welcome to a, uh, a very special edition of BBC Breakfast. We've come outside because, if you've just switched on, it is the last ever time that Louise Minchin is going to be on this show. Look at the beautiful day that we've got. Isn't that what? Oh, that's brilliant. I love you, that. You just said to me there before we come on, is what are we doing now? And I, I've really kept some big secrets what from you What are we doing? You've, you've had Rob here, but I, I don't think that, that any party is ever sort of complete without a cake. Right. So would you like a cake? I'd love a cake. OK, can we have some music to accompany the cake? <laughs> You can play anything you like. Bring in the cake! <laughs> oh, hey! Thank you! That's what I, I was asked last week, could I be very specific and send a picture of the dress that I was wearing and there it is that's the reason why thank you that's so right. much and this is not only any cake this is David Duncan who makes cakes for the royal family well I mean it doesn't look <laughs> like any cake it looks absolutely thank you David it's beautiful from 3d cakes in Edinburgh David give us an idea of the of the time and oh, the effort that's so gone lovely. into this 
Okay, so the <laughs> the team in Edinburgh, they made it and it took around about six, 16 hours to create. Oh. Um, the flowers and the wee figurine of Louise were all made in, in uh, sugar paste. So, oh. so, so can, a little bit of thing. Can she eat herself? Is it a cru crucial <laughs> question? She, she could, she could. Yeah. I'm not going to. a little to. bit tough. <laughs> I'm not going to. What I love is about you've got my hair all perfectly right with the slight roots at the top. <laughs> <Yeah>. Beautiful. <laughs> uh, David, really would you is. like to, thank you very much for that. That's lovely. Would you like to put on your Minchin mask? Yeah, yeah. And go and join the rest <laughs> of the Minchins because um, Rob, Rob was the first Minchin that we, we brought out. Do you want to go stand around in the back yeah, there? You can put on your Minchin mask if you like. Thank you. I've got one. Oh yeah, we'll sort you one out. Don't worry, we've got a few spares. Uh, can we ask the next two mystery Minchins to come forward, please? <laughs> Louise obviously knows these two very well. Uh, this is Louise's husband, Dave. I can Dave. definitely hug the one in the middle. And uh, Louise's dad, Patrick. Thank you so much for coming. It's lovely to see you both. You've Gosh. just apologised to your wife, Dave, haven't you? Yeah. No, I've just apologised for lying, unashamedly lying Honestly, to her last night. She said, um, you know all about it, don't you? And have they asked you to come? And I said, no, no, no I'll be at home. <laughs> and look at that big smile on your dad's face as well. Oh. Patrick, can I ask you? I mean, I, I've sat next to this wonderful lady for five and a half years and worked with her. You've obviously known her, her entire life. How proud have you been of some of the things she's managed oh, to do? Immensely. I mean, how, what can you think for a dad to have her daughter <coughs> perform such a fascinating role for 20 years? Oh, I'm okay. immensely proud. Um, and her mother and her family just over the moon. And I've followed her everywhere around the world. And Literally. <laughs> Literally. He's been to Norway. He came to Chicago. I've yeah. dragged him around the world doing, following me in triathlons. He's very good at it, by the way. Oh, right. Is that where the, yeah. watching, that where the skill watching, set comes watching, from? Watching. Right. No, okay. Dave and I went to Norway and supported her throughout the, the Iron Man, which is quite a um, adventure for ourselves, quite apart from <laughs> Louise yeah. keeping up with her. And, you know, Dave, many people who watch this programme have been inspired by Louise, not just what she does on the job, but the things that she's done in the water and the triathlons and some of these incredible things she's talked about with, with Rob this morning. Oh, yeah. and, and she got into this basically through working on this programme. It started yeah. off at the velodrome, didn't it? What, what have you made of some of the things that your wife has achieved? Oh, I'm in awe. <laughs> it's so courageous. The bravery, I mean, she's been... Um, just the challenges she's taken on. Um, and she does it all with a giggle and a smile on her face. Um, and I've seen some of the pain that she's gone through, the operations, um, and, and you've just been brilliant. So adventurous, so courageous, and it, it's just been, it, it, I've learned a lot, um, and, and I think she's learned a lot from it. Um, but it's been such fun, really such fun. And, and thank you to the show for um, really leading us down that path. And, and allowing her to do it because it's been great, really great. Um, something that's really key to both um, what David's saying and Rob is saying is that you can't do anything alone. Hmm. You can't do it alone and it's always so much easier when you've got somebody's hand to hold or you're running with someone or you're running towards someone. Just, you know, remember that everybody at home, we're not alone. There are people out there who can help you, who can support you. And, you, you know, I couldn't do this job if I didn't have a backup team, the team who work here, my dad, my mum, my husband, my children. You know, mm. it, that's what it is. It's teamwork and that's how we all get through it without... Them, I couldn't well, this is your family, obviously your, your BBC oh breakfast family as well. I... I feel we need to bring in some more members of the family. I think Sally and Matt are here as well. Oh, we can drag them in. On, Give them a nice round of applause. And well I know that you and my dad are now best friends, which is very good. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. Lovely, lovely to see you. So I'm going to scoot around here. Thank you. Thank you so much. And, uh, I know oh. that you, I've, you know, in the times yeah. off air over the last few years, I, I've known you talk about how much your family have meant to you, both your two daughters and everyone else as well, and, and that has been such a special thing for you that has carried you through some of the difficult oh, times yeah. and something you're really looking forward to once you don't have to get up at 3.42 every morning. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> it's be, yeah, um, I'm really looking forward to all the kind of sort of silly things that I miss, which are, you know, watching late night telly on a Sunday. Mm. Um, that's very funny what they said about the curfew because there genuinely is a <laughs> curfew. 3.45, that can go now. But yeah, it's just the silly things. It's school run, it's um, having breakfast together, um, it's watching telly. It's not, you know, it's just not all the time feeling that pressure. Well, I certainly felt it to kind of you know, the only way I've coped with the hours is by being really disciplined and, you know, going having a sleep on a beautiful sunny afternoon because I know that's the only way I'm going to get through it. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's normal, normal stuff.
Um, home stuff. Do you mind if I say something to you? How long have we got? Well, I just <laughs> I, I feel that... Of course I do. No, I, I get to see you every single morning, and I, I know how good you are at your job, and I, you know, I... I haven't been looking forward to this day, as I've, as I've told you. you know, from the minute I started with you on this amazing programme, we got on. And as I, as I said earlier, it's, it's hard to find someone who makes everything so comfortable, but you are that person. That's one of your special gifts. I don't think we've had a single argument in our five and a half years on TV, which is incredibly rare for anybody who <laughs> knows anything about TV, TV land. <laughs> and also, there's been a lot to deal with on this programme, you know, both on and off the camera. But I'm really proud and I feel very privileged that we've done and dealt with that together. And, you know, we've turned to each other when we've needed each other. And I don't think that will, will ever change. And that, that's something I've really enjoyed about working with you. You've got so many talents. We've heard about some of them today. But you're a, you're a fierce campaigner. You're a skilled journalist. You're annoyingly good at every single sport in the world. You're an international <laughs> athlete. because I concentrate. No, but you're great. You're a mum, <laughs> you're a wife. And, you know, many people standing behind you here and sat on this sofa will know you're also a really good friend. Uh, and I've, I've often marvelled at your ability to, you know, put a worried guest at ease or ask the perfect question when someone is in tears on the sofa or someone has gone through heartache and somehow you find the right words at just the right time. It's been wonderful to get to know you a bit. Um, we've covered the biggest stories together. We've spoken to some amazing guests. I'll miss your eye roll when I go on about something. I'll miss that golf face you give me when I talk about the what, sport that I love. Yeah, that one. <laughs> I'll miss the, the laughter. I'll miss the tears. I'll miss the fun. But most of all, I genuinely, I will really miss you every single day. Um, and I get asked all the time at the minute, what are you going to do without Louise? I don't know. I don't know what I'll You'll do without fine. you. I'll but be... what I do know, Louise, right, is that whatever you do next, you'll be brilliant because that's just what you do. And I think there are two types of family, right? The ones that you're born with and the ones that you find along the way. And it's been an enormous privilege to share this sofa with you. And all of us here will miss you enormously. And the programme will never, ever be the same without you, Louise. Thank you. Can I say some thank yous now? Go on then. OK, so I've written it down just in case I talk. So, um, thank you first to Dan. Um, because of you, I've stayed much longer than I actually meant to, haven't I? Yes? <laughs> I mean, really longer. Um, we've been through tough stories. We've been through tough programmes. Um, the one thing has been absolutely clear. You've just said it. You always have my back. Uh, you've made me laugh. You've made me roll my eyes. Um, you passed me tissues when I cried. I've got some here just in case. Thank you. <laughs> I'm feeling OK. Um, also, a huge thank you to this wonderful, amazing BBC Breakfast team. I've loved working with you. You work incredibly hard, all of you, all hours of the day, of the night, every single day of the year to put the programme on. Uh, you are absolutely amazing. I shall miss you terribly um, but it, you will carry on the program will carry on and it's been an absolute pleasure working with you and finally and kind of most importantly to everyone who is watching it is really really thanks to you for watching all of these years um, you are absolutely at the heart of everything that we do and it has I feel proud it's been a privilege to sit here on the red sofa and report on our shared history. You've made me feel welcome in your homes, um, welcome in your hearts. And I just feel like I'm a small part of a huge BBC Breakfast family. We've talked about family, haven't we? Um, I'm part of that family. I will always be part of that family, even if I'm not here on the sofa. And I cannot thank you enough for your support, your love, your messages. It has been an absolute pleasure and I take great joy with me in my heart as I leap off this sofa into the great unknown and I will keep watching and I will still be with you. Thank you. Well, you enjoy life beyond the sofa, Louise. We'll all miss you. You're an Thank absolute you. superstar. If you say goodbye for the final time, we'll get this band to play, we'll play goodbye. some music and then we can all give you a big cheer because you are the best. Go on. I wasn't going to say goodbye, but... Um, thank you. And for the last and final time, goodbye. Have a great day, and I'll see you somewhere on the other side.